Okay. Okay. Well, I think we can start it. And I apologize to everybody for if my uh, cold gets in the way of my voice tonight, but I'm doing the best I can. Um, so October 27th, 2022, 7 p.m. Uh, we'll kick off the uh, the regular schedule meeting of the Conservation Commission here. Uh, we're doing this remote on Zoom. The meetings normally held at the uh, municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extend the governor's March 12, 2020 orders suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2023. Uh, meetings are typically broadcast on Access uh, TV as well. Uh, the Zoom and dial-in information was posted on our website. And from what I know, everybody's been able to, uh, to join. And so uh, we we'll call the meeting to order and we can get started. Um, just quickly review some of the meeting guidelines. Um, We ask you to uh, mute your phones unless you're uh, asking questions or, or commenting. Um, part of the Town of Deerfield General Meeting Guidelines, speak one at a time, please. Uh, we follow the Deerfield Code of Conduct, conduct of being respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and non-repetitive. I would also add that um, if you do want to be recognized, please address the chair to be recognized to speak. And unless you're presenting, uh, please keep comments to a two or three minute time frame or, or less uh, so we can keep the meeting moving along and keeping to with our, our guidance of um, concise and non-repetitive. So greatly appreciated to that. Uh, take a roll call of the commissioners present, please. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin here. Sean Libby. Sean Libby here. Ben Byrne. Let's see Ben, I don't hear Ben. Uh, Pete Law here, so we have three out of the five commissioners present tonight. Um, so the first action is looking at the meeting minutes, excuse me, of our September 22 uh, meeting. Uh, these were distributed. Just wanna make sure that Kate and Sean, myself, I have received, everybody else has received. Have you had a chance to review? I have. Okay. I have. All right. Are there any comments uh, concerning the draft minutes that were received? Any revisions necessary? No. Okay, then I think we can go ahead and uh, accept those minutes. Shall I make a motion to accept the minutes of uh, September 8th? <laughs> September 22nd, sorry. Yeah. Looking, saw the wrong date. Yeah, I uh, second that motion. Which has been uh, presented on the floor, seconded. So I put it out to a roll call vote on accepting of the minutes. Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Uh, Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Pete Law, aye. So we will accept the minutes for September 22 as written. And Amy, you should have those. Um, great. So one item of new business this is for the commissioners. Um, this is uh, concerning uh, kind of a re-approval um, of acceptance of Adobe sign documents. Um, we've done this the last year or so uh, during some of the uh, pandemic that started we, where we haven't gone into the office of sign them directly. Um, the acceptance of Adobe sign documents is pretty widespread, uh, most the agencies, uh, but we do have to just verify as a commission tonight um, that you all feel that it's appropriate to continue to use the Adobe signed documents the way we have been. And so I would need to, um, and there may be a few nuances. We just got some information in today from um, our, new, our new assistant administrator. So there may be a few things to look at, but basically we just need to as a commission, understand that if, if you guys accept um, the policy of using Adobe signed documents. So I need to take a, I would be open to hear a motion on, on that uh, process. 
Um, so, Pete, I would suggest that you make the, the motion that I suggested um, referencing the MGL. I don't know if you have that in front of you. It was MGL that I didn't write it down. Yeah, I have it here on another screen. One second. Okay. MGL summary of uh, on electronic signatures, or was it? Uh, yeah, it, it cited the chapter. Um, yeah. yeah, let me see if I can get it up in my email. Yeah, so we're looking for a motion to accept e-signatures as legally binding in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 110G. Yeah, that so, was it. Yeah, so on. thank you. I should have written that down. Do you need one of us to make a motion or? That would be great if you would. If not, I can. So I can make a motion to accept. Um, to Sorry, I missed the ability, like the ability to use electronic signatures according to Mass General Law Chapter 1110G. Is that enough? Yeah, I would maybe perhaps revise that so we, we accept the signatures as legally binding. Accept the signatures as legally binding. As uh, with Mass General Law Chapter 110G. With Mass General Law 110G. So I don't know if you want to revise that further or we're good enough for that. I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> you know, I, I think that's a good start for now. You know, we're referencing the law. We need to look a little cl more closely at the law. I mean, I think we've been conforming, but um, I would say just we'll start with that and, you know, yeah, hope that's good we'll, enough. <laughs> we'll get the details right. put together. Okay. I'll second that motion then, Kate, and I'll clean it up in the minutes. Okay. Okay. So Thanks. It's been made and seconded. Take a roll call. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Pete Law, aye. Um, so Amy will work on the uh, precise details on that, but uh, at least we got the approval from the commission to continue with that. Okay. Too many screens going on here. Uh, the next um, move into some of the old business, so we'd be, uh, reopen the public hearing continuation for a notice of intent filed by NUPRO. Um, this is for construction of 124,680 square foot building, parking area, loading dock, apron, site lighting, site landscaping, utility, stormwater management, riverfront resource area improvements on property identified in the ass assessor's records as map 168, lot 21, and lot 21.2. So we open the hearing. I don't know we have too much to discuss tonight. I don't know if there's any um, representatives for new pro uh, on the call tonight. Good evening. Oh, hi, Mark. Hi, Pete. Um, I and Derek are here as representatives. Um, I'm not sure um, what you'd like to discuss about the project. We're still going over the um the peer review comments and trying to address those um i believe derek wanted to discuss something with the commission but um yeah as far as i know i'm still trying to get through all of the peer review comments and address them yeah so much mostly what i was thinking was just to let the commissioners know that we do have a peer review underway uh, combined with uh, Conservation Commission in the stormwater uh, aspects of it. And um, so we'll probably just look at a continuation. But Derek, did you have other information you want to address tonight? Well, yeah. So I believe Ben from Berkshire Design was supposed to be here as well. Um, yeah, I believe so. And I don't know if he's on the call. If he is, I'd appreciate him reaching out. They did submit their comments to us. Um, okay. And not seen you know, that yet, so that's good to know. So we we did work through a, a lot of their comments, and you know the biggest the biggest thing I was hoping to have Ben here to discuss um, was 
you know, under the notice of intent review, um, you know, mo most of our, I, all the items applicable to NOI um, approval, um, we met, right? They, they, and I'm, I'm a little disappointed that they didn't get over this letter to you in time for this meeting and have their representative here if he isn't here, um, because this was a big part of my conversation. So, you know, in, in the, the file and we could send, send it over to you, um, he should probably send it over, but basically it speaks, you know, that we are improving the riverfront like Mark suggested in the past um, meeting. It does go through the statistics saying it under section B, the applicant has provided stormwater management plans that comply with state stormwater standards. See the stormwater review below. So, you know, our plan did comply with state stormwater regulations. Um, there was cer certain comments on the stormwater review that, you know, Mark and I have agreed to work on um, to address, but, you know, it's a matter of time and, you know, the comments are gonna cost the client money. We're, one of the comments is raising the building. Um, which, you know, it's about $150,000 in fill. And, you know, with the weather coming and the detriment of winter conditions, you're looking at another four hundred to $500,000 impact by not being able to work in the spring month or the in the month of uh, November and getting pushed into December. So, you know, there's a couple of ways around that. There's a special meeting, um, you know, because this was supposed to be done by the town. Um, during the select board meeting, it was also voted on. Uh, my, the client did hand a check into the con, uh, the town the next day, at which point it took two weeks for the town to sign a contract with Berkshire Design. So we lost two weeks up front, um, which a lot of this stuff probably could have been worked out if that was done a little quicker, right? So um, I guess where I'm going with this is asking for, for a little cooperation on the conservation's end to allow us to, you know, at least start work outside the 100 foot riverfront resource area um and that's that's the big part of it that would allow me to at least get 90 percent of my foundations in prior to the snow flying um the other 10 percent would be within the 100 foot riverfront resource area and we would leave those until the next meeting when we meet um so you know i guess we could talk about it on your end and see how you would feel about that that but that would be a huge advantage to the client and myself if we can um come up with some sort of agreement technically anything you know outside the 200 front front riverfront district um it would give us about half the building to do the foundations and that's you know outside the 200 foot riverfront is outside the conservation commission's authority at that point so you know at least if you were to give that permission it would allow me to be somewhat successful in getting 50 percent of the foundations in so um all in all none of these comments on here on the zoning end were there was no no big issues on the zoning end and in the stormwater end, there weren't many major concerns. And I don't know if Ben's on the call now and he wants to talk about it, but if he isn't, um, I'll leave it at that and kind of open it up to the Conservation Commission for discussion. I will also interject that, as Derek said, the issue is mostly just trying to balance the cost of raising the building. I mean, we can basically copy the previously um, the previous project for New England Natural Bakos, but we were trying to keep stormwater underground instead of having full bays and swales. Um, that way we would reduce ponding on site to mitigate or oh, reduce the chance of mosquito breeding. Um, but the way that the peer review comments are kind of pushing towards that design, which commission previously um, approved. So it can be done. It's just a matter of time of putting together the plans and the changes. Yeah, well, thanks for the update, uh, Derek and Mark. Um, I have not seen the peer review comments. Um, I'm not sure if they were in the been submitted to the file, but I don't believe anybody in the Conservation Commission has seen any of the. Uh, it was sent to Casey um, this afternoon. Oh, okay. Um, uh -huh. So I, uh, uh, we haven't uh, haven't seen anything, so hard to comment. I'm um, sorry, she did not send it to me. I um, did not know that. Uh, I can send it to you right now. Yeah. And I also would like to point out that our proposed stormwater design 
is the same type of design that was used in the Dumont um, project, which is just south of, well, on the southern property line. And the, there's no issues with that as of now that we know of. Well, I think, um, yeah, you know, speaking for the commission, but and the other commissioners can jump in, but you know, without having a little bit of of time and, and reviewing it in, in real time here on the call, it's going to be pretty tough to make any real decisions. There were some there were some issues that were some concerns, not issues per se, but concerns that we wanted to take a look at closer. So, I think perhaps um, Derek, you mentioned perhaps we could have a special meeting, and maybe we can do that. I have to part of our agenda tonight is to look at pulling forward our next meeting to the third Thursday of November because the fourth would fall on Thanksgiving. So it'd be three weeks out. We'd have our next regular scheduled meeting. You know, we won't vote on that till later tonight. Um, hello. Hello. Who's this, please? Yeah, I've been I've been on the line since the start. This is Greg Henson from Berkshire Design. And apparently um, uh, I was I wasn't uh, unmuted. I didn't have to do the star six. So, so I did hear the comments earlier. Okay. Do you have anything further for us, Greg? Or? Well, my concern is, is um, starting the building foundation is, um, you know, the, the finished floor elevation because um, the drainage structures are, are of concern based on the, the elevation of the groundwater. So that I, I, I think that was our, our biggest comment was that if if the detention basins fill up to the top, then most of the uh, drainage structures will be submerged. And, and also the roof drainage. Um, the elevation of the lateral pipe coming out of the building is at least the plans that we have. Uh, is lower than the spillway of, of the detention basins. So basically that, what that means is it puts those pipes under pressure so that the uh, roof drainage coming down the uh, downspouts, you know, it, it could be under pressure up, up you know, however, however far it, it goes um, with physics. So yep. that, that was our biggest concern was uh, all, all the drainage structures being submerged. Yeah, if, can I speak to that real quick? Um, just to um, the so the stormwater, the scuppers coming off the building, it is in a closed system. It's a pipe that fits in a pipe with an air gap. So any pressurization wouldn't build up in the storm pipe. There's 45 feet ahead coming off that building, 40 feet ahead. Um, the building's that tall. So between the head pressure, I don't think that would be an issue. And between the air gap, it wouldn't be an issue. Worst case scenario, it might have bubbled out of the top of the pipe. But that's beyond that. What what I what I was getting at was the foundations. I'm willing to raise my foundations a foot and a half and raise the site a foot and a half. But I, I really well, I, need I think, permission to move forward. I think if you did that, I think if you did that, that would alleviate um, most of our concerns. Yeah. So where I was going there, all their concerns go away if I raise the building a foot and a half. Mark needs time to redesign that. It's as easy as me redesigning my foundation design to basically pour those footings at grade. Um, there's no issues, Ben, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's no issues with degraded wetlands or um, we're actually improving the site. Would you agree with that? Yes, oh yeah, yeah. Um, another, another guy in our office uh, did review that part and, and he does agree with that. You so know, that, that uh, with, with that being said, you know, in the peer review, they agree we're, we're improving the riverfront resource area, which is was the biggest concern of the Conservation Commission in the last meeting. We're also willing to spend an extra hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars in fill to raise the building and redo our site plans, which is, you know, I'm telling you right now, it's something I'm doing because it's going to alleviate the issue that, you know, Ben picked up on, even though we're fairly confident that our stormwater system will work. But it's not a matter of disagreement. It's a matter of productivity and getting this project going before the winter, which would cost the client tenfold the amount of money that raising the building is, right? And, and you know, so I, I'm a little disappointed that you didn't get the comments in time from Casey. Um, and, you know, there's nothing I could do to control that. But I think 
you know, Ben, you just heard Ben say, if we raise the building a foot and a half, then all his concerns go away. And, and he's the peer reviewer. And I would hope you would take that into thought um, tonight and, and help us move this project forward. Okay, so, so my name is Greg Henson from- Oh, Greg, Berkshire. sorry, Greg. That's okay. Um, the, the, the other thing that was of concern was the foundation drainage has to, has to daylight out somewhere so that it doesn't mm -hmm. get uh, put under pressure. Yep, and, and we were gonna address that as well on our updated plans. Um, That'd be and, perfect, yeah. Yeah, you know, and so what, what, I, what I was really asking from the Conservation Commission was approving it with the condition that, you know, during the next meeting, we'll review the updated stormwater plans and under the fact that, you know, we won't start any stormwater improvement work until those plans are approved. Yeah, the fact that you're raising the foundation a foot and a half that that is that's the biggest issue and, and then and then you can adjust your uh pipe inverts your rim elevations whatever yeah. accordingly and i'm really glad you found that mute button <laughs> Okay, any other comments oh, from the applicant or the peer review? Comments from the commissioners? Well, it's a tough one. Um, why don't we let Margarita weigh in first? Okay, uh, I'm not sure who Margarita is, but if somebody has their hand up, um, so we can I, I would actually, comments. I would like the commissioners to speak first and then I'll speak. I'm a member of the public. I, I don't, can you hear me? Oh, I think I was on mute. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, so I was saying I would like the commissioners to speak first and then I'll speak. Okay. Anything additional, Sean or Kate? Um, well, you know, I understand it, it's uh, regrettable that we didn't get the plans from Casey today, but they also weren't given to our town office until today. Um, so I, it's hard to speak uh, to something I can't really look at. Um, I do feel like uh, that, you know, our own peer review, um, you know, if they're okay with it, then, then I would be willing to support the board if they were willing to, I mean, we're, sign, we're signing off casually on something we don't have an actual, you know, the plan hasn't been revised. We don't have anything on paper in front of us to to really uh approve um i understand the issue though so i'd be more than willing to have a special meeting in the first week of november and or yeah you know depending if the board was available um to schedule something after we've had a chance to look look at things um that would be my comment okay. anything for you Kate? yeah this I was just going to say, I support that comment too. Um, <clears throat> if we can have just a little time to look at things, um, I don't want to agree to something but without having actually seen it. So, but I, I could do yeah, this. This is Cole Hanson from, from Berkshire again. We, we, would, uh, we would also like to see the plans before we sign off on, on the letter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it sounds like maybe we're, we're a little ahead of the game here. Um, through no one's fault of the, of, of the commission here. We just haven't seen the information. Um, so I think there were some other hands up there with uh, Margarita. Hello, thank you very much. Um, my name is Margarita and I live on Fair Street behind the DPW. I moved to Deerfield in 2007, so I have the experience of living in this neighborhood before the DPW was built, during its construction, and as it is now a permanent fixture. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight. The new Pro Factory in Merrigan Way will have a permanent impact on the neighborhoods 
This 124,000 square foot factory is being placed in the middle of neighborhoods. If my questions are not for the Conservation Commission, please tell me where I might direct them. I have timed myself and it should be about two minutes. The factory will run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The tractor trailer trucks will enter Merrigan Way and leave Merrigan Way from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Has there been a traffic impact study completed? So we have a sense of how this will permanently impact the neighborhoods as well as our downtown. I'm concerned about the possible contamination of the aquifer. As you know, there is a fuel tank located near the DPW. The water table in this area is sloped and leans towards Thayer Street. Many of the basements in Thayer Street fill with water. A leak, a possible leak of the fuel tank would condemn all the homes on Thayer Street. How will the magnitude of this building and the intensity of its traffic impact the safety of the fuel tank? What about the impact of the diesel fuel fumes on the neighbors as these trucks idle being loaded? How much diesel fuel running into homes is acceptable or healthy? As in a butter to the DPW when a truck idles for even 10 minutes, my home fills up with noxious fumes. This factory will have many more trucks idling during the day. What about the noise and light pollution? Will it be like living in a mall parking lot? Are we eliminating night for the neighbors? Are we eliminating peace? Each truck will beep, beep, beep as it turns around as there's only one entrance and one exit to Merrigan Way. Nupro is a clean factory. They provide clean air for their workers who are there 24 hours a day. They must have a ventilation system for the byproduct, the dust which is created as they work with and change the polyurethane. Where is the byproduct of the polyurethane going? This is a building which will have a permanent and enormous impact on the neighbors surrounding it, the property values of their home, the traffic on Sugarloaf Street and our downtown. It would be helpful if the process could be slowed so we could plan for the best possible merging of this factory with the citizens of Deerfield who live and sleep and have peaceful use of their homes. Once built, as evidenced by the history of the DPW, it will be impossible to reduce its impact. Thank you very much. I look forward to your insight. Okay, thank you, Margarita. Um, listen to all your comments and they are beyond the, um, the Conservation Commission where we're, we have to work under the uh, Wetlands Protection Act established by Massachusetts and we look at, at, at various aspects of it, but um, things like traffic and, and um, noise pollution and, and light so forth. Um, and maybe Amy could be better uh, at answering this, but you're probably looking at either the planning board or directly to the select board. Yeah, so this is, um, it's an expedited permit. So I think actually it's the select board um, is dealing with it. So I would take things up with the select board. Yep, okay. Hopefully Thank that's you. helpful. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, can you hands up from a Deborah? Yeah, hi. Um, I just wanted to um, second where you all were going with this as a member of the public and a homeowner in Deerfield as well. Um, I'm not in a butter, but um, it makes sense to me that there's time to review this and also for the public to see the impact statement. Um, and for, I believe that is that part of the process for us to be able to see it too? Or is it just the commission? Uh, no, the, the plans are on file. Um, both they are on the website and they are in the town offices. They can be viewed during town office uh, hours, Monday through Friday, uh, eight, nine to four. I'm sorry, Monday through Thursday, nine to four. Yeah. Um, and also if you go up on the website, um, you, I know I've, I believe I've posted it to the conservation yeah. site. And I might've misspoken and I apologize. I mean, okay. I mean this, the Berkshire review, what, what everyone else here hasn't seen yet. Do we get to see that too as members of the public? Cause that, that's not on the site yet, right? If the commissioners haven't seen no, it. Yet. No, I haven't gotten it. Um, yeah. yeah. Yes, I believe that that will go up. Okay. That'll be posted, but yeah, since so okay, we so it done and the plans um, finalized, they'll yeah. get posted. Right. So time for us to look at it, time for you all to look at it. And then the only other thing I was going to mention for now is that thinking about what you mentioned, Peter, about the purview being 
the soil and the water, um, there's still I, what I heard in Margarita's comment about where does that there's got to be some waste going somewhere. And so I think, um, at least for myself, some of my fears about this facility would be allayed if I understood. I understand the purview is if it's going into a wetland, et cetera, here. But um, honestly, the select board folks, I don't think are super focused on the environment. So so where where is it going? Any waste yeah. products? Uh, so thank Debbie. We'll, we'll have to move on to back to the wetlands here in a minute, but um, all of that should be addressed in, in the project plans that are uh, available at the town hall. Um, so those are all items that um, any project of this type would have to address in, in one form or another as they uh, move forward in various commissions and agencies and boards have different um, uh, purview and oversight of each one. Uh, Derek, you had your hand up here. Project manager, yeah. maybe you can answer that some of that right now. I, I could answer all of it, but um, I would highly suggest they watch the select board meeting from last month where we addressed all those questions um, that did happen at the last select board. And there is another select board hearing on, I believe, Wednesday, September 2nd, and or uh, sorry, November 2nd, um, which we'll be discussing the new pro project again in detail. Um, but to answer the pollution question real quick, just to put some minds at ease. Um, what New Pro does is they, they make polyurethane film and the process is real clean. So dust is bad for their product, right? It doesn't make it sellable. So um, each clean each clean room has built in fil MERV filters, charcoal filters, and all those filters are in line of the ductwork. So as we're sucking air out of the process space, we're filtering that air and we're actually putting it right back in the room because the, the room requires humidity and temperature control. So it's very important that we're not spending the energy and the money to to redump all this fresh air in when we're recycling it. So we still meet code for makeup air, but as far as pollution, it's a very clean process. Um, and th th there really is no stormwater runoff, oils, any of that stuff in their process, right? Um, the, the only area you're gonna see a little oil is at the air compressor, the, that goes to floor drain, which goes to an oil uh, grease sand trap per mass co plumbing code. Um, this building has been in design for over a year, and we've thought about all these things on our end to address these concerns. Lighting pollution, we submitted a foot candle plan showing all the light. Again, this was all discussed at the select board meeting. Uh, acoustical and noise pollution, that was discussed at the select board meeting last month. Um, and we really did dot our I's and cross our T's on this one. And, and I live in the area as well. And trust me, I, I, I wouldn't want to see a building going in a neighborhood that wasn't safe for the environment, right? And for the people, um, that's that's not our goal here. And, and and I'm not some big box developer coming from Boston. I live in Greenfield, I live locally and I'm in Deerfield almost every day. Okay, well, thanks for that. And I think we we have uh, veered off from um, our task for the night. Um, yeah, for, um, uh, can I just say a quick, for the people who are interested in the select board, um, you can watch the last select board meeting on the YouTube channel. Um, and again, you can attend the next one remotely. Okay, great. And Margaret, you have your hand up one more time. I'll get, I just, if you can take just a few seconds, that'd be great. Yeah, I just wanted to thank um, Derek for what he said. Um, I did watch that select board really carefully and my questions were, I mean, this factory is moving into my backyard and into the backyard of a number of neighbors. And um, I, I know that the people in this meeting can appreciate what a big change that is. And so I did watch that select board. Um, I also have studied the maps because I can see that your company is doing a lot with trees. Um, to, and I will talk to you at the select board meeting, but I am concerned about Thayer Street. There is no, um, no, no, nothing being done for light pollution and trees for Thayer Street. Thank you all so much, okay. very much. Yeah, thanks everybody for your input. Um, I don't see any other comments now. Um, Given the comments I received from the other commissioners, uh, you know, I might suggest that we we take a look at uh, waiting for the, the plans and the document and the peer review to, to come in, be finalized. Uh, we will, you know, we'll, we'll review those as quickly as we can. Uh, as a commissioner, we'll try to uh, then establish a meeting, if not by, um, I forget when the third, if not by November 17th, perhaps earlier, uh, if we can have a special meeting, but we will have to have some time to um, 
to review the documents and review the peer review and it just uh, really can't be done on the fly here tonight while we're uh, in the midst of the discussion. So I hope everybody understands that. Um, any other thoughts or I would take a, a motion to, con uh, to continue the hearing till either the next regularly scheduled meeting on the November 17th or a special um, conservation commission meeting um, date to be determined uh, depending on when we have a chance to review and so forth. Sean Libby, I'll make a motion to continue the public hearing for the notice of intent for MAP 168, Lot 21 and 21.2 filed by NUPRO to the next regularly scheduled Conservation Commission meeting, November 17th, uh, 2022, or a meeting earlier uh, in nature um, as agreed upon when we can get a quorum. Uh, that's, that's the motion. Okay, do I have a second on the motion? I'll second that. It's Kate Devlin. I'll second that emotion, that motion. Okay, I'm gonna take a roll call on the commission, please. Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Pete Law, aye. And uh, Derek, Mark, um, I'll work with the town administrators um, and get this information as quickly as possible. We'll get it out to everybody to get a review. I'll uh, reach out to the select board as well. Um, planning board because it was kind of a joint peer review covering both stormwater and um, the, the WPA aspects. So um, we'll do the best we can. I, I appreciate the patience and understanding on that. And uh, as soon as we get the documents, we'll get at it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. All right. So that was new pros. The second. Um, continuation of the hearing. Uh, we'll reopen the hearing for the notice of intent filed by Daniel Hartman, All States Material Group. Uh, this is to make improvements to existing gravel road, including widening the road, replacing the stream crossing, and constructing a pad site for parking at 901 River Road, Map 21, Lot 1. Uh, we just received a, a lot of information uh, yesterday, day before, something like that, and I I just started to review it, and the most recent information was the um, um, response to the peer review uh, and some site plan updates. And I believe tonight we have uh, Emily Stockman from Stockman Associates who uh, completed the peer review on the call. And we see who else do we have that's representing uh, Allstate that I see. I see Danny and uh, Ellen, right? Okay, great. So I think we have everybody here involved. Um, I think there's a lot to go through, so this may take some time to to pop through. And I know this has been going on for a while, but this is um, you know, 12 pages of response with a lot of details. So um, I'll um, go ahead with the uh, applicant to give us your update, please. Yep. So, yeah, you're correct on the volume and we apologize for um, kind of the short review period on the delivery. We essentially crammed several months of work into several weeks. Uh, as you know, there in the last meeting, I was unable to attend, but I was, you know, uh, given some details on the discussion and it was essentially more of a verbal description of what was to come in terms of just addressing Ms. Stockholm's, Ms. Stockman's comments and then how we were, were gonna completely redesign uh, what had been previously submitted um, to further uh, kind of accommodate uh, the comments, uh, which you know were largely valid and uh, further reduce impacts. So what you had received was essentially the proof in the pudding um, backing up the verbal discussion from last month with the actual, you know, depiction and the redesign. And um, Eileen, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, but that's essentially, you know, our our position at this time. Yep, and I'm um, I'm sharing my screen that has the redesign plans on it, and I can zoom in a little to the um, hotspot. Um, so as 
Danny said, completely redesigned the project um, after Ms. Nachman went out to the site, we went out and did um, additional wetland delineations, found this wetland south of the road. And so we flipped all of the um, road widening, widening and infrastructure to the north side of the road. So there'd be no wetland impacts and also um, no grading or loss of bank to um, this stream south of the road. Um, and so I, we can, those are the sort of the highlights of um, how we addressed the third party comments. The, the one thing I'll say that we're waiting on is performing uh, the test pits on the proposed stormwater basin locations. Those are scheduled for next week. Um, and these basins were designed pretty conservatively. So we are not expecting the design um, to need to change at all based on the test pit results. Um, but those are scheduled for next week. Yeah, I did note that in, in, uh, in your response had a question on that, but we can get to it. Okay, um, anything else by Lean or Danny? Nothing from me. No, we'd be happy to entertain any questions the board may have. Yeah, I, uh, and I'll ask uh, Emily to, uh, to jump in here too on the review. Um, I had questions on, or comments, not maybe questions on kind of line by line. Some of them are, are questions on a little bit more um, explanations on your uh, response letter. So uh, Emily, I don't know if you want to go through it that way or do you want to give a, a kind of your general comments first? Hi, Pete. Thank you for that introduction. For the record, this is Emily Stockman, wetland scientist and peer reviewer for the commission speaking. Um, I think it makes good sense to go through it line by line. I um, only received the materials um, yesterday evening and, and some links this morning. Um, so I have not had an opportunity to review the response or the revised plans. Um, going through the response line by line will probably be the best way to proceed. Okay. That's what uh, I was afraid you're going to say, because this may take us a while. <laughs> um, but it is kind of, uh, kind of came in late. So does everybody have the uh, letter from October 26, 2020 from Kleinfelder? Um, Notice of intent peer review response. I do. And I have read through it. Okay. Um, I, I did have one question because I'm coming in on the board late. It's probably easy to answer. Um, I did see that, you know, the major change is from the box culvert to a 60 inch culvert. What, what is there now? What there size are, culvert is in place? There are two, I believe they're 18 inch uh, corrugated plastic culverts there currently. Well, let's get those out. All right, thank yeah, you. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> this is a picture of um, the culverts that are there right now where the inlet is. Yeah, okay. So Emily, you ready to go through this? Um, the comment yeah. <laughs> one was the resource area boundary delineation flagging review. And there was a number of locations where there was comments the flagging um, was either missing or not on site on the plans. The um, response has been the plans have been updated to include flag location labels for all wetlands and stream. Additional delineation has been performed. Um, it's shown in the updated plans. So I'm not sure if you really had a chance to, to verify that, confirm. Um, I certainly haven't compared old plans to new, new, new maps, so. So the green shaded uh, polygons on Eileen's screen represent the wetlands and the blue, um, the blue lines with a triple dot in them represent the streams. And you can see at all the vertexes, there's a label and those correlate to the flags in the field and are now shown on the plans per request. Zooming in pretty far. Yeah. I think it's it's pretty clear, Eileen. Yeah. Any comments for uh, Emily? Um. So yeah, I mean, in response, um, Pete, I 
I think we're all in the same boat having just got these plans. I haven't had an opportunity to print them out and go um, through them, um, comparing them to the previous um, submittal. With that being said, I can say that um, the BBW depicted on the lower left, I can't read the labels, um, is um, graphically located within the area where we had identified a wetland that had not been previously flagged. Um, so at first glance, it, you know, that looks right. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, I haven't been out to the field to see it, um, but it certainly um, does correlate with my notes um, as far as the extent of that wetland and the approximate size. And then whomever has a screen share, if you go back up past, um, yeah, I think if north is up, yeah, scroll down. So the second area where we had identified um, a BBW was along a down um, gradient reach of the stream. And again, um, having not been on the site, but looking at my notes um, from the prior site visit, that appears to you know, graphically indicate the area that um, was identified during the site visit. So um, that's the extent of the feedback I can give on, on those two yeah. areas. And then as far as the remainder of um, the delineation, um, as it's shown on this site plan, we were able to review the flags in the field. And as I stated in my peer review comments, overall, we concurred with the placement. The issue was really um, a drafting one in that the original site plan with the notice of intent didn't have the flags uh, labeled on it. And so um, again, I could go through my notes to make sure that uh, those are looking right, but you know, the difference is now we have labels <laughs> and uh, that's, what, that's what we were looking for. Um, yeah. For those other, for those other resources. Well, and as I've heard these comments, maybe we'll take a different tack instead of going through this one by one, because it's similar to the last discussion. We, we haven't had a chance to really review. Uh, peer reviewer hasn't had a chance to really review. Um, I have maybe a couple of comments that are a little bit larger in picture than the detail one by one. Um, but maybe if we take a few days, get comments back um, from our peer reviewer on your comments, we could eliminate a lot of these without going through. I know you're up against the, the timeline of, of getting things ordered, but so again, you know, maybe we can have an indication tonight that things are looking, you know, we're, we're in a much better place, or maybe we, we wait till the 17th or we have another special meeting um, that we seem to be adding every couple of weeks these days anyways. Um, to address, does I mean, does that sound like maybe a more reasonable approach instead of going through one by one for a lot of things that we just uh, haven't had time to review? I would be amenable to that. I understand the board's position. I'm on the planning board in East Hampton, and I'm faced with similar things with applicants. So um, I think that's more than reasonable. Um, I, and I'm, I'm sure Eileen, that's is that okay with you as well? Yes, of course. So yeah, we understand the board's position. And when we submitted yesterday, I more or less assumed this would be the case to be completely honest. Um, but in Eileen and Kleinfelder's defense, they really put a Herculean effort in to get these plans turned around at least before tonight's meeting. Um, so I applaud them on that. Yeah, well, that's great. No, I appreciate it. Um, there was a lot to it. Absolutely. I worked with engineering firm my whole life. I know what it takes to get some of these things done. <laughs> um, general comment, there was a few comments uh, relative to um, the uh, work around the uh, permitted stormwater systems. And it appears that most of the comments will be, uh, and we'll, we'll wait for Emily's response on that, but you know, probably not applicable because you have your stormwater permit that regulates stormwater on the property and uh, those modifications are under that permit. But that'd be something I want to make sure we're clarified with. Um, yeah, let's see. There's a couple of areas where, like in number four, um, it was identified of a hydrophytic plant community. 
uh, is that additional delineation has been formed, including flagging, labeling, and on revised plans. No impacts are proposed to this wetland. Um, and, and so I guess in some of these instances, if we could just make sure that the plans show those changes and what the no impacts are versus us taking your for word that there, there's no. Yep. So yeah. you can see the, the line that says LOD, that's our limit of disturbance. And then I, excuse my dogs. Um, and then as I previously discussed, the, the line types for the resources, the blue and the green. So you can just see the impacts visually that, that they're not there. And that comment, excuse me, um, that comment uh, is directly related to the discussion we just had about those two essentially missing wetlands um, for Emily's you know, recommendation, which we had concurred with on the second review of the, the terrain with our wetland scientists. So that fortunately, I think we just kind of discussed and then that's a pretty easy visual assessment uh, for the board's end as well. Okay. Yeah, just some other areas. Um, wording is uh, downstream loss has been minimized to the extent practicable. Practic practicable. Excuse practicable. Me. Yeah, that's a, that's an engineering term. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, let's let's make sure we show what that is. Um, back to see is no longer proposed. Another one area you say where the new portion of stream SO6 will be replicated as closely as possible to existing conditions using new uh, using natural substrate. In, you need a little bit more detail on exactly what well, that is. actually we had discussed during the second meeting, I believe, and that was a question brought up by the board. You can see the hatched area on the south end of the stream, how it extends up into S6. And that's just because right now where the current culvert is in the double barrel, S6 needs to kind of be diverted into the new culvert. So everything functions properly hydraulically and without flooding and excessive scour. So we do have to essentially coerce the stream at the very tail end. So it will flow the way we want everything to flow um, and per other regulations. Um, so there will be a little small amount of redirection there, um, nothing atypical of civil design projects. But again, we agree to kind of put it back in place as naturally as possible with the same materials, essentially moving them instead of removing native and bringing in some kind of riprap or some you know highway grade material. We, we find it best to just use what's there and just kind of move it over. So that's essentially what that verbiage is referring to. And, and we did kind of discuss this in prior meetings that that part of the design is, is not really changed much. Okay. And I note on stream six, uh, revised to, um, so there'll be no erosion control devices crossing the stream, they'll be outside the- Yeah, that was a drafting error that was cleaned up and it actually further reduced now that we had, uh, as, uh, Eileen mentioned the redesign kind of pulls us even further away from 06, but that was a good catch on the boards. And there was a kind of a drafting error that showed a silt fence popping out of the LOD. So we certainly will not be installing silt fence in the stream or outside of the, the demarcated LOD. Okay, that's good. Um... I know you had quite a bit of discussion on the uh, sizing and the stream crossing standards for the um, for the new culverts. Um, not quite hitting the 1.2 kind of acceptable or the generally acceptable minimum crossing width, et cetera. There's quite a discussion that it probably went a little bit beyond my level of engineering expertise. I don't know if uh, Emily, if you had a chance to look at that or not, it's um, under section 11. Um, if not, I'd ask you to take kind of a close look at that. Um, it's a length of the crossing and the width. They're utilizing an, an average bank, bank full width of the various range. Um, and 
use a 1.2 to come up with a, a width that's applicable to that average, uh, but doesn't always hit the, the uh, extent of the, the widest range. Um, but there's discussion about the, the flow rates and the openness of it and calculations and so forth. Um, just want to make sure that we have a little bit of input from you, Emily, on that to make sure that the board can be or the commission can be com comfortable with with that uh, little bit of a um, little bit difference on the um, the generally utilized 1.2 times bank full bank full width. I think the um, the takeaway from that is that if you go by that 1.2 standard, you end up with an, needing an 18 foot span which is pretty large um, compared to what's there and is way beyond the flow requirements uh, for this stream and both normal flow and storm flow. And putting in that kind of span, they would have to do a lot more grading, a lot more tree clearing. It would be um, much more impactful <clears throat> to put that in. And it's not, it's not required to meet the, the flow characteristics of the stream. Yeah, there's a lot of good information here. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, we think the spirit of that reg is to keep impacts minimized, but we think this may be one instance where it would create more impacts to actually follow that to the T. So we're trying to do exactly what Eileen described. Yeah. And that the 1.2 bank full width and the openness ratio, it's um, a rebuttable assumption. So the Wetlands Protection Act allows for, um, for the board to approve um, something different than that, as long as there's corroborating evidence from a credible source, I believe is the language. Yeah, and, and, I, and I appreciate that. And, and Emily, if you could just kind of take a close look at that, so. Um... Yeah, the, the Massachusetts um, River and Stream Crossing Standards um, overlap with the Wetlands Protection Act regulations under section 1055 and 1054, which have to do with the performance standards for bank and for land underwater. Um, the stream crossing certainly does um, address um, the flow of streams, but the origin is um, from the standpoint of um, wildlife passage and stream continuity. So if the um, 1.2 bank for width standard can't be meet or met rather, or the openness can't be met, um, I would concur that you can go through the process of, of demonstrating that, um, that those items can't be met for um, whatever constraints there may be. Um, and then subsequent to that, you just need to demonstrate that you're meeting the performance standards under 1054 and uh, 1056. So it's when when the commission is presented with a stream crossing design that meets the stream crossing standards, the regulations say if you meet the standards, you meet all of the performance standards. If you can't meet the stream crossing standards, you have to demonstrate why, and then you have to demonstrate that you're meeting the subsequent standards under 54 and 55. So I will certainly go through, um, I, can, I can tell that there was a lot of assessment that went on <laughs> during this. So I'll, I'll certainly go through that and then I can comment for the commission, um, you know, uh, how those performance standards are being, being met if that's been demonstrated. Yeah, great. That'd be great. I know um, those are areas of concern with DEP and so forth. So um, that'd be good. Thank you. Mr. Commissioner, I had uh, one last question while we we're still on that exact topic. Um, and I didn't see where it was addressed. Um, how are you burying the culvert under this proposal? Uh, and how far is the 16 inch culvert plant? Is like, is there a rule like you bury it one third down or? I believe it's two feet. Um, 
I believe it, it, it is going to be embedded and I believe it is embedded two feet, but um, let me see if I can find where we mentioned that. It may have been there and I might have missed it. I just reviewed it as quickly as I could when I saw it come in. Um, I can't find where it says the depth, but it, it is proposed to be an embedded culvert. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, just on the riverfront section now on page nine, uh, you talk about we're a little bit over the total area of the parcel, 11% of total uh, within the 200 foot riverfront area, uh, but via Revegetation um, resulting in about four percent of the rivers riverfront area on site would be permanently altered. Um, just reading through this um, again, just making sure we're good with that. Um, Revegetate a little definition on that is that per revegetate naturally what's occurring in there now, or would you be doing plantings? And if there's any plantings, do we know what type and when and how many of each and so forth? So the area that's disturbed will all be um, restored and seeded. And then if it needs, if, um, if it's happening during the winter and it needs um, the biodegradable mats on top of it, that will be used too. And then it will be allowed to revegetate naturally. So it will be re stabilized and seeded and then revegetate itself. Okay, so initial uh, stabilization, seeded, then natural revegetation. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Status, uh, additional counter points, stream bypass. a little bit about the time frame um, look for Emily's response there. Um, additional comments. Uh, number three, statement of filter socks under hay bales. Um, we have to use strawberries bales here in Deerfield. You can't use hay, but I believe that's um, accepted and noted later. Um, okay, so the test bits, um, that's another reason um, I think we need to, to, to take a few more days to look at that, and I'd like to get your um, the results back on those test bits, and it looks like they're planned for the week of 1031. You said you've done a conservative design plan, so you feel they're going to be well within it. But um, coming from a, a past history of looking at data all my life, it's, it's great to look at data once it's in. So um, yeah, be looking forward to that. Just make sure that that confirms the uh, assumptions made. Um, there's also a question, which I can't find it. Um, back here. Second. about whether there was any outstanding conditions from previous projects. Oh, uh, yeah, there's a question, any special conditions associated with the order of conditions um, back on the the hall road itself. Um, well, we did did review our files on that, Emily, um, in, including sending one of our assistants out to the, <laughs> the lock storage shed out in the backyard that nobody ever wants to go into to find the find the box. So we found a lot of information on this site 
but we did not find any uh, outstanding conditions um, for that specific entity. Um, Alex did enjoy his time out in the tin can um, on a hot sun, sun day in early September, but uh, we didn't find anything that was still open, but at times records can be a little fuzzy. Um, and there was a consideration of perhaps we need to go back, uh, the peer reviewer to go back and, and take one last look. Uh, once everything's done, I think we'll we'll wait to hear from uh, Emily Stockman on that once she does a more formal review and we get all the other information in place to see whether that's needed or not. Um, I think that those are kind of my, the ones that I put stars on when I read through this and, and I apologize, I was only able to read through it briefly this afternoon. Um, but um, appreciate uh, peer review, uh, Emily, to go through it one more time, bring us comments. We'll look forward to your test bit information. Um, I know you have a time frame, but would if we continue this to the November 17th, three weeks from now, uh, does that still work within your time frame? Give us some time to review. I mean, to be completely honest, we were hoping that construction would have already started and that we had, you know, we still have not procured the culvert, um, which is a very long lead item. So where our actual timeline for constructing it this off season is in serious jeopardy. Um, if we did have a special meeting, I know we would greatly approve it. And I know you know, if there are some lingering concerns um, that that we do feel and that the commission feels could be addressed, um, you know, conditional improvement contingent upon those items, like, for example, that the test pits do come out with lower infiltration coefficients than used for design, that, you know, Miss Stockman's, uh, if she, if you decide she should go back out or if she decides that, that her acceptance, you know, you could always make a motion to approve with conditions to be met. So at least my company will have a little bit of confidence to start at least purchasing materials, knowing that the items left are certainly achievable and that we have some faith, you know, from the commission that this product will go. Um, and just furthermore, to, to remind the commission, it's, you know, it's of my opinion that this project is overall going to it's going to widen the road and allow our company to safely utilize the eastern portion of our parcel. Yes, but this is a much better culvert than I mean, we if otherwise what's there stays there, um, which is, in my opinion, very substandard uh, and that the drainage and stormwater controls, this will vastly improve, although we are within permitted and regulated suspended solid um, and pH levels this will make it even better you know it's i just think uh that, that the big picture shouldn't be lost here either and that's i guess i'll just end with that no i, I think we've made a lot of progress in reviewing the information here and, and uh, getting this forward um i'll ask um emily stockman what would your time frame be i think the board would be if we can get every or the commission would be open to a special meeting in the next couple weeks but I we would need I don't want to speak for you and your schedule um, for your comments back so what are you thinking Emily um yeah so I um appreciate that the situation on the site with the culverts um that exist is um, definitely subpar <laughs> from an environmental perspective and I do appreciate the intent um, to improve upon what exists today. I also appreciate that um, the schedule for this project has come under some upheaval to say the least. I will, I will make it work. I will find a day. Um, I'm just looking at my calendar right now. I will get this reviewed and you know, I can get it to the commission by the 2nd of November. Eleven two. Let me look at another screen. What day is that? So that so so then, if the commission wanted to ha schedule a special meeting for the following week, 
I, all parties would have my comments, you know, a week in advance. So we could look at maybe the uh, tenth. Um, maybe we could have a a dual session with New Pro on the same day. Okay. Um, Eleven ten. Well. Commissioners, maybe we could do a similar one. We'll, we'll continue the hearing with the intent to um, uh, schedule a special meeting on Thursday, November 10th, if commissioner schedules allow. Um, we can leave it a little bit open that way. Uh, on however you put a motion in on that, um, I can do that. Um, I think Danny and Eileen, that's probably about the best we can do in, in, in a couple of weeks and get the comments back, have a chance to review them. And like I said, I think there's been a lot of good bar progress here and there's just lots of questions and yeah, no, it is, we're, we're full-time volunteers on this stuff. Um, I yeah, completely I understand. And thank you, Emily, for that. And, and we appreciate the commission considering this. So thank okay. you. So if we can, maybe someone could put together a motion of Four. of my ramblings of. Um, I will. Uh, continue, I will do that. Continue the hearing. Okay. Uh, I will make a motion to continue the hearing on the NOI filed by Daniel Hartman uh, for Map Twenty One Lot One uh, to a special meeting scheduled by on a November tenth. Uh, or the next regularly scheduled Conservation Commission meeting scheduled for uh, November 17th. Kate Devlin, I'll second that motion. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, I think that's good. Motion's on the floor. We'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Meet Law. Hi, so we will do the best we can and hopefully see you on the 10th. Thank you, Commission. Appreciate it. Thank you, Emily. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to see everyone tonight. Yeah, thanks guys for all the input. Okay. Um, third public hearing continuations for an abbreviated notice of resource delineation for the wetlands delineation filed by Kenneth Google and Sunny Days, Inc. Uh, the NRED asked the Conservation Commission to accept revised wetland delineation shown in the submitted plan. Uh, property is located off Greenfield Road, Map 159, uh, Lot 14. Um, from what I understand, I have not seen the report yet, uh, but the um, peer reviewer uh, was Freshwater Wetland Services, uh, Ms. Kate Beznes, and um, she noted to me by email yesterday that she had finished the field work and would have the report soon. Um, I see Ken on the line. I was going to thank Emily Stockman before she left, but I missed her uh, for the past one. But um, Ken, do you want to, as the applicant, um, address the commission in any way? Yeah, sure. Um, appreciate the work that Kate's doing out there. Um, especially I didn't know that she got back to you. So that's great. Um, hopefully, <laughs> maybe we jump on that special meeting in a couple of weeks if you're able to review it. <laughs> yeah, we won't have anything to do in our regular meeting. But <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to say it to the commission, but maybe we can jump on there. We're in the same boat as everyone else, you know. Um, yeah. So we, we've received our licenses from the CCC. Our civil engineering is done and ready to submit to the planning um our noi is ready for you guys so everything is just hinging on this uh anrad being approved so we're we're patiently waiting um i think we'll we'll get her done here soon okay yeah um yeah i do expect to hear from kate um pretty soon on that she seemed to indicate that it was she was working on it as you know fairly straightforward so that'll be good um any other comments from the commissioners well shauna <laughs> repeat deja vu. same motion as before okay 
I will make a motion to continue the hearing on the ANRAD filed by Kenneth Bukian to uh, November 10th or the next regularly scheduled Conservation Commission meeting scheduled for November 17th. Kate Devlin, second. Since on the floor, take a roll call to accept. Uh, Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Pete Law, aye. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to cross out on November 10th for anything else. We'll <laughs> honk on them all day long. So th thank you, everyone on the commission. Thank you. All right. Take care. Have Thanks a good night. Yeah. Bye bye. -bye. All right. A um, few folks on the line. Uh, I don't know if there's any other general uh, discussion or anything from the those present, but uh, basically there's just on the agenda, just some general discussions um, for the commissioners that I wanted to go through and just update you on a few um, current things that we had on our plate and a couple of new things that we um, didn't need to discuss. So Excuse me, may I, may I address the last uh, item that you just um, addressed? Uh, this is Mary. Mary. Mary yes. Um, Hi, Mary. Let's see. Uh, my name is uh, Mary Boren Titch, and um, my husband and I own the property at the junction of uh, Conway Road and Waitley Road. Uh, and, you know, a tip of it is within that 100 foot. Uh, is this appropriate for me to speak now? Or yeah. Not? Uh, yeah. What, and this is in reference to, to what? I'm sorry. To the, um, oh gosh. I think to the sunny days that we just yes. heard. Yes. Oh, to sunny days? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm so yes. sorry. Is it appropriate now or not? Yeah, go ahead. I, um... Okay. Um, uh, my father owned it and held it in chapter 61 and before him, uh, my grandfather. And we have it. We have, uh, it is in chapter 61 for us as well. And uh, we are hoping that the, trees will, you know, continue to um, be relatively healthy um, and are concerned about, you know, uh, water, any more water onto that property uh, that that would, you know, obviously affect the this health is, of the trees. Is it your property then south of the, the property or I don't have yeah. a map quite? Yeah, it's a, I'm sorry, sorry. It's across 116 and um, a little bit west. Okay, cross 116 yeah. west. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, you know where Sidley's is? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're our, we're on Conway Road and uh, above. Okay. okay. So, um, yeah, it's 15 little... acres and um, uh, it's wetland. I mean, uh, occasionally I think of it as a swamp, but it, <laughs> it you know, it dries out occasionally. Um, I wanted to just read you, um, do, can I read the, where is it? The description of the property by our forester, the, um, the soil, it's short, I hope. Okay. Um, the terrain is flat with numerous low lying depressions with low dra slow draining, seasonally saturated soils, wetlands and intermittent and perennial drainages. Soils are primarily Rayum silt loam, which are very fine sandy loams that occur in level to nearly level lowland areas with a high water table. Other soils in the eastern half of the property are poorly drained walpole fine sandy loams and sacco mucky silt loams. So you can see why, you know, we would have concerns about any additional water coming our way. Um, I I know you will take I know that's why you're you know on the board you want everybody to be um, safe you know in terms of what you do uh, and uh, I would appreciate that um, my dad I'm very uh, grateful that you commissioners do what you do I know it takes a lot of time my dad was on the finance committee and the Tilton Library, he was a trustee of the Tilton Library for years and years, gone many nights. Uh, and of course, you you dedicate time to it. We, 
you know, to prepare for meetings. So anyway, I just want to thank you. And I want you to know that um, we are hoping that whatever they do on that property will not cause more water to come our way. Okay. Uh, uh, certainly noted and I appreciate your comments. Uh, currently, we're going through what's called a an abbreviated review um, for delineation on the site, which is um, a, a, basically a delineation of wetlands and the wetland boundaries on the location. And that's where we brought in this peer reviewer, uh, wetlands, um, freshwater wetland services, uh, who we use you know, fairly often as a, a peer reviewer. And we'll be uh, awaiting their report, but we'll be looking at what what is on the conditions of that property that the applicant has, has, has brought to us. Um, and we also look at, we, uh, along with planning board and the engineering and inspectors and the design folks of so the various different departments take a look at it, would look at if there would be, you know, construction or things that would change uh, on processes there. And, and somebody be looking at water flow, coming off water flow from that, particular site is not specifically under our purvey, if you will, uh -huh. um, but we would be looking at the wetlands conditions and, and making sure that they're following um, the uh, Wetlands Protection Act guidance here in the state. Um, so we keep a pretty close eye on, on that aspect of it, which hopefully helps people upstream, at the stream and, and downstream. So yes. that's kind of the... Uh, um, any other comments, commissioners? Did I miss anything? Okay. Well, Mary, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Take care now. Okay. So, uh, commissioners, just a few updates here. No, uh, first one was on the enforcement action at NAP 132, lots 29 30, up on um, routes 5 and 10. I got a. Yeah, so, uh, oh. I, I just wanted to mention that um, I looked at my email. Casey did send um, the letter back that's been vetted um, by the attorneys. Um, she sent you a copy too. She sent it at six thirty. Yeah, I so, took a brief look at it and I had a yeah question yeah. back to her. So basically, oh, okay. what we're doing, I just want to let the commission know that we're still going back and forth between council to get the, the wording right. And uh, so it has not been submitted, um, but thank thanks to, to Amy and uh, Badgering, uh, Casey and the lawyer, we're, we got some responses today anyways. So hopefully we'll, we'll keep on that. So still waiting on ca uh, council comments. And then once we get that in place, um, we will, and, and Amy's already started to put together uh, the request for, um, proposals for the um, peer review or for the delineation, not the peer review, but the actual delineation of those uh, parcels uh, 29 to 30, which the gardeners accepted to pay for. We have also reached out to DOT. Uh, Amy has an application in hand. I believe we need a, a permit of some sort from the DET, DOT for their permission uh, to also be able to get on their property to complete the delineation of the whole site um, that would have to come from town funds probably the commission funds we have a couple of different funds we can choose from um, but it would be best to do it all at one time and complete the delineation um, in that one area so that's where we're at with that right now so we're still waiting um, the north main street park um, has been back and forth from DP. The DEP uh, rep on this one is Mary Grover. Um, there's been a lot of comments back and forth to uh, the planning board, to the select board, to peer review. I only see a few of them. Uh, thank you to Amy. She kind of gives me the ones that are pertinent to us and keeps me out of the fray of all the rest. Um, but there is a on-site meeting scheduled by DOP, by DEP, by Mary, uh, for November 8th at 10 a.m. Um, this will, all parties have been invited. Um, so I'm assuming there'll be representatives from planning boards, like board, 
um, Conservation Commission, there'll be attorneys, uh, there'll be consultants, uh, whoever, um, various people were invited to, to the party, if you will. Um, I plan to be at that meeting uh, on the 8th and you'd certainly have uh, one more of us uh, attend. I think we have to keep away from three at a time to keep away from the quorum issue. So um, Sean, Kate, if, if you have time and interest to do that, just let me know or Amy know. And I think we're, Amy, we're just meeting on North Main Street, just parking there and seeing where people are at. I guess that's a meeting place. Yeah, yeah, whatever it said on that, uh, what I sent you. <laughs> So that's on there, but if uh, when you have a interest in joining me on that site review, um, let me know, and I can one of us can one of you can go if you know I now. Do. Let me know, John. Okay. I I have an interest in Kate. If you do, then we can discuss. If you don't, then no worries. I have an interest, but I'm also working that day too. So um... lucky me. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those i just looked at my calendar i was like uh oh <laughs> all right, all right. So. Okay. Uh, so amy if you could send that just those details to sean okay sure thank you um so i'm going through all my piles here do, 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 do. there was a lot of back and forth on, on that. let's see we also received a um Excuse me for turning around, but I got stuff everywhere here. Um, we received a, a notice from um, Green International Affiliates, which is um, working with the Massachusetts Department of Transportation relative to the bridge work, the bridge preservation uh, for uh, Stillwater Bridge. Um, they will be starting that date unknown to me, but uh, it's obviously a very, very large project. Um, and they have asked the commission if we have any comments and we have a 30 day period to comment, which uh, we the town received this is stamped October 14th. So roughly the second week of November. Um, we can share the project descriptions with you if you want to know, but it's basically switching off that big old bridge and um, building a new one and, and doing road work on either side and some of the access ways and so forth. Um, I would like to get comments in. Um, the planning board was also asked for comments and they um, probably are not going to put comments in. Um, you know, here it is what I was looking for. Um, now this project um, falls under, and this is from DEP, the 2014 Transportation Bond Bill, Chapter 79, Section 24, Acts of 2014, which exempted such projects from WPA permitting, among other state law. Therefore, the Commission and Mass DEP uh, do not have any jurisdiction to permit under the WPA. Uh, however, it does it appear Mass DOT is offering the town, the commission, a chance to provide thoughtful comments on the project. If the commission has any concerns um, regarding it, it should be their chance to comment. So I think it, it, um, it'd be good to put comments on the record. Um, and I believe these comments would go to public comments and I believe they have to go into the local newspapers, et cetera. Um, yeah, they have to, published within a 21 day period in the local newspaper. Um, it looks like the Mass DP Boston office reviews Mass DOT highway products statewide. And they'll probably have the authority over that under 401 water quality or WQC authority. But anyways, I think we can put in some general comments. Obviously we can't put a lot of conditions in and can't really comment. We have no real saying here. Um, but if you guys have any thoughts on what comments do, uh, we can talk about it tonight or you can send them to me. But I was thinking at least general comments that we expect uh, the project will adhere to, uh, you know, proper erosion control um, applications will take into account all wildlife and, and uh, uh, natural heritage kind of issues. We'll do, 
will be sensitive to the, the fisheries in the, in the Deerfield River and how important that is and um, reduction of any, you know, elimination of any silt and so forth getting into the system that could be, you know, really, which is really bad for trout, and especially other fish and macroinvertebrates and such. So I would, you know, it's general comments, but be good to put on the record that these are at least our expect our expectations that they will do um and this is what the town expects so that was kind of my thinking um thoughts on that i think that makes sense um i think it, it it's relatively easy i think to to list sort of general expectations um that would you know fall within the guidelines of what we would expect any project to to have you know yeah and just to, just to say them and then they're then it's on record yeah that's what i was thinking in 2k is just put it on record something happens where yeah, this is what we this is what we've said and, and so forth and it's going to be so high profile there's going to be so many people watching it and um your trout unlimited will be wondering what's going on and everybody else and so forth so um glad to put a, a quick draft together next week and send it along to the commissioners see what you think but if you they're okay with me doing that for the commission i i, I can start that and uh, i'm sure i'll miss a lot of things that you could add to it but just kind of put it in a bullet form say thank you for the opportunity here you go and uh, i'll probably run up i might run it by tom at the uh, a DEP again too, but it's, a, it's an opportunity and I, don't, and I don't think we just say wave it off, so. It's also an opportunity for public education too, in terms of what, hmm. what, we're, what we do, you know, like what we're keeping an eye on. That's a great aspect too. And that's something that we need to do more of. And I have to get back, while well, you mentioned it, we have to get back to, um, oh, that's another, topic coming up here but um treehouse on that treehouse on education signs and stuff yeah yeah as well as the main street one if that goes through <clears throat> okay so let me draft a, a letter send it to everybody and see what you think makes sense unless Sounds anybody good. else wants to volunteer to draft it but i think i have the details here so i'll, I'll take first step at it okay um that one. Who is next? Um, just updates here. Uh, here's another one, Old Deerfield Fire District. Um, they requested just a, a, an informal site review to, to give them some ideas. They're looking at uh, putting a, a new firehouse um, in some land that was apparently going to be donated by Deerfield Academy. It's map 69 lots 19 and 20. And Amy can, I, I can't, I went to look for it today and I can't find it, but maybe we can look at the map tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Between it's, uh, Richardson's and. Yeah, I think it's, the, it's the street that goes up to Eagle Brook, someplace in there. Yeah, it's right. It's opposite Deerfield Academy. And it's actually, I think it's 19 and 21. Lot 20 is like this teeny weeny little weird thing. So the lots that they're really looking at um, are 19 and 21, okay. which are contiguous. So anyways, I'm going to meet and just talk to him today. Pat, 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 Pat O'Brien, I believe his name is. I'm representing the Old Deerfield Fire yeah, District Pat tomorrow morning at 930. Anybody wants to join me, uh, that's where we'll be on the side of the road uh, on 510. Uh, tomorrow morning at 930. Um, we looked at the map and I got to pull up the mass GIS map before I go up in the morning, but there seems to be at least a small stream swale or something going through that area. Yeah. Um, it's, if I think I know where it is, it's probably all the water coming off of um, the range, the Pocomtech range coming down off the, the west side and then the, the, flows down through i mean we've looked at places up at eagle brook and there's a lot of flow going down through there and there's a lot of probable probable uh wetlands uh things to discuss up there but you know i, I told him to give him a quick look um and because his request is like 
you know, do you, can you just come out and see if they are going to be and what will probably suggest is like yeah it looks like you probably wouldn't need a consultant to uh, start working on it before you bring it to the board it looks like a stream runs right through it is yeah, that true I, yeah yes maybe on the third side the third of it toward the eastern side yeah yeah mm. so i'm not sure if that's a, a perennial or if that's an intermittent or i haven't pulled it up on the state maps yet i think i, I think pat has been out there and he was sort of like it doesn't look wet to you know one of those it doesn't look wet to me so i, I you know i'm not <laughs> If they can't see a lake and some people can't see well, a lake is not a wetland. If Pat yeah. thinks it's not a stream, then we're good to yeah. go. No, I mean this is you know, people come out there, they want to know, oh, is this a wetland? Do we you know they call me and they say, you know, do we have to go in front of the concom? It doesn't look wet. And I go, well, you know, that, that doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> so um leave it open. If anybody's there, we'll be there at 9 30 tomorrow morning. Um Next quick item is a treehouse brewery. We did send them the letter, went back and forth with Mark Stanaki a couple of times this week, who's a consultant and they hadn't looked at it. And then he sent me back a note today. So they got the letter, but they don't know what it means. So I have to call the guy tomorrow, I guess, and just kind of walk it through to him that saying basically that we're, we're being very nice and just kind of letting you know, uh, kind of thing. But I put in my, my notes to them that, you know, we'd be willing to come take a, another look at the erosion controls and possible removing some or all of it, but not till we know that you kind of hear what the commission has to say. So that's on me as of four o'clock this afternoon or something. I guess I had to call a guy and explain my letter, which I thought was fairly straightforward, but. <laughs> I, yeah, I was just going to say what's not to understand. I thought that was pretty clear. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, sometimes wow. i wonder what well, dialect of english i actually use but didn't the letter say that you wanted the the waddles returned in place yeah, yeah. i know there's so, at least one not there <coughs> I, I, well that one's the done. yeah that's the easily one easy one to see yeah so that one continues some of these things that i just you know, can't get by um uh, <laughs> oh Annalie, hi <laughs> Missed all the fun. We're just wrapping up. Um, the last item I have is some general terms and conditions. And this is a process that um, I started with Tim Hilshi. He actually started um, before he, he went to higher office. Um, and we were trying to put together just a kind of a, just a smorgasbord of, of conditions that may apply to either uh, an RDA or a, an NOI at given times. So instead of re reinventing it every time and coming up with new language, every time we look at it, we would have these in place that we could just pick and choose from. We could say, yeah, we can describe them, but then go back to him and say, yeah, use number seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 29 and 30. That's applied to this one. And it's just nice and easy and straightforward. We keep consistent. It's there, we put it on our records. Um, and I was asked by Tim, and, and I think even Tim started it when he was still there and asked afterwards a follow up with both Casey and, and our, our counsel and say, you know, is this doable? Are we on firm footing here? Do we need to check any other boxes? Can we do this? Um, basically, what I got back this week was, hey, it's your conditions. <laughs> you know, when you write them, you can use them. So. I will send them off to the commissioners with some notes probably next week just to clean up. We did have, I don't know if we were sure it was Emily or Kate um, as a kind of a quick peer review to go through it and make sure we covered things. We cleaned up a little thing areas, but I think it would just make it easier for us. Um, pick and choose, consistency is there. We have it on record. Um, these are the general conditions. <coughs> a lot of them are somewhat boilerplate. A lot of them were used for the uh, town bundled NOI. You saw many of them there. When I put that draft together, I basically copied a lot of them off of this um, draft of the general conditions. So that was it on that. So that's another thing I got to do. Um, two other items that I didn't have on here. Um, three other things I didn't have on here. And so, okay, we had a very nice letter sent from the uh, MACC 
relative to your completion of eight units of the Conservation Commission fundamentals. And that's posted to a press release, all sorts of good stuff. So congratulations. So they, they have a press release. You want me to send it to the Greenfield Recorder? <laughs> You can uh, you can be in the paper. I mean, it's, it doesn't hurt. You get you guys, you know, get you guys some visibility. Just let me know, and and I'll do it. Yeah, well, whatever. That's all I'll to Kate, but that's great. Uh, so, Kate, did you finished all eight? Is that the? I did all eight. Yeah. The one hundreds and the two hundreds. Yeah. Wow! Look at you go. Yeah. I, could only, I can only sit through those a few at a time. Well, they're they're intense because it's it's the it's like three hours of <laughs> being talked at um, at night. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're they kept, interesting though. They were. I kept asking for responses and replies. You know, any update, yeah. And I had so many comments I wanted to send them. Like, I can't get in the middle of this right now. I, I thought some of their presentations were just like, oh, I know what you're going to say next is so can this is so this and so. Yeah. But anyways. That was my own opinion, but I got to, I think I got four of the 100s done and maybe a couple twos. I know Sean's taken a few, so yeah, maybe by the time I, I fully retire in the next 15 <laughs> years, I'll, I'll get to your point and get the certificate in the paper or whatever too. But congratulations, good stuff. <laughs> Thanks. I feel like now that it was just an introduction to everything, you know, a fast introduction. Yeah. So now it's like, okay, now I, I have more questions now. I'd like to go back and listen to again or something, but. Yeah. You're you're the uh, font of information now that you're the only certified Absolutely commissioner. Not. <laughs> yeah. no. The only MACC recognized commissioner. I think so. I, mean, I used to be calling Tom Gross because I DEP all the time. I think Kate's on my yeah. speed dial now. That's right. Oh, no. <laughs> oh dear. Tom will appreciate that. <laughs> um, two other quick things. We need another member. I mean, I, I'm struck out on the folks I was trying to travel with. Um, but if we if follow anybody, just try to send them my way and we'll see what we can do. Um, just a side note, because I read this in the paper the other day and I saw it, and maybe Annalee knows more about it too, I don't know, but that the, the town became part of the regional district pollinator um, district. And it's now quite a few towns in the area. I think there, if I counted up all the different ones, about eight or 10 uh, that are involved in this program, which looks at probably things that come out of the playing board, certainly the conservation commission, different things of, you know, being sensitive and, and applying um, plantings and so forth that relate to pollinators. We can do that within, you know, the times that we have to um, replant things and so forth. And I also, um, my my uh, my wife is big into the monarch butterflies and milkweed. So whenever we can uh, uh, plant more milkweed, uh, be anything, and the pollinators, I think that'd be a wonderful thing to do and be a great part of our educational output too, Kate, that you mentioned before, and some of these things of yeah, why we do this stuff and why it's important. So it uh, it's great. I would add um, we could consider delayed mowings as part of uh, improvement mm -hmm. for pollinator habitat, you know, and that that's the sort of thing we can bring into uh, letters when we're like talking to Mr. Gardner about mowing, you know, just to maintain his property. If if we can get the mowing to be distributed so that it's early in the season and then late and like after the pollinators have done their work, <laughs> It accomplishes a couple of goals, but still keeps his lot cleared and clean the way he may want it to be. Yeah, I had to work on some areas in the my mother's farm up in Heath, and it's nowhere near wetlands. Up, and there's no there's no wetlands in Heath. It's a big rock, um, but we had to wait until we had at least two or three frosts on the milkweed before we could touch it, because we were told you gotta you gotta wait, and my wife made sure of that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so it's good. Um, Amy, I didn't see any other new mail. I think we covered what we had from. Yeah, yeah, nothing day. else has come in. I tend to, you know, when it comes in, I send it to you and then yeah. um, I try and include everything in that little packet I send out in the 48 hours before so that um, everybody can have it handy. 
And that just reminds me, Annalie, I'm not sure when you jumped on, but one of our topics was about the Stillwater Bridge RFQ. And I know the planning board had a letter for comments, the Conservation Commission had a letter for comments. And we're going to put together comments from the CONCOM side of things because there are just, these would be just general comments of expectations on erosion control, silt maintenance, uh, just general things that we would do all the time. Because we have no jurisdiction over this. This is an exemption of the, uh, uh, the Wetlands Protection Act. Uh, it's a state exemption and it's, there's the DOT can take it and run with it, but we would like to go on record as comment. So I just wanted you to be aware on that because we had a little back and forth on that. Yeah, so. thanks. Yeah, we're not meeting again until after the comment period. So um, right now, as the planning board people have, you know, looked at it superficially, it doesn't seem like they've got any comments. So we'll probably be passing. Yep. Okay. Uh, and that makes sense. I think there's some just applicability with the concom for this one. So. Yeah. Just to let you know on that. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know of any other items in unanticipated in the last 48 hours. Um, and so I, I would look at an upcoming meeting. We, I, we had to move it to the third week. That'd be our next regular. Then the 17th versus the fourth week would be Thanksgiving. Um, so I guess I would take a motion to schedule the next regular meeting for the 17th, knowing that we may have to schedule a special meeting for the 10th. I'll make the motion uh, to uh, <clears throat> to adjourn the, Com the Conservation Commission uh, meeting at 8.47 p.m. And uh, we will be meeting next regularly scheduled meeting at November 17th. Oh, do we need to say that we're going to do the one on the 10th or is that sort of up in the air until we know? Yeah, allow me to strike that. Um, uh, I'd like to adjourn, make a motion to adjourn tonight's commission meeting uh, at 847 uh, p.m. and uh, schedule the next uh, special meeting for November 10th and the next regularly scheduled meeting for November 17th. I'll second that. Okay, and before we take a vote on that, just name me a quick question of clarification. Um, I know we need the 48 hours for the town notice of meeting, but as these are continuations of hearing, do we need to do anything further with notice to the newspaper? Seven no, days we don't have to do, no, we don't have to okay. do any legal so notice. We just have the yeah, we can 48 just go hours. Ahead and... That's what I thought. Okay, great. Yep. Yeah, it's only when you're taking up something new. All right, motion to adjourns on the table. Um, roll call to accept. Sean? Aye. Sean will be aye. Okay, Devlin. Hey, Devlin, aye. Be La, aye. And as they say, that's a wrap. <laughs> okay, woohoo, just under two hours. Good job. <laughs> Got a lot, there was a lot tonight. But um, yeah, no, but, all right. Yeah. There'll be a lot coming out to you guys next week and the week after. So, talk okay. again soon. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, everybody. Bye.